Hi all. So this is the third video for explaining the SQL part of 2015 CBSE board exam. So this paper is 2015's question paper and as I told you I'll be uploading today all the videos which are related to the SQL part so that you can practice it properly and make sure you don't lose anything out of the 30 marks which you have in your 70 marks paper okay so to start with we have question number three where you have almost all theory questions for sql so the first question is what is my sql so the answer should be like my sql is a database management system it provides options to create and manage database we can add new data or modify existing and fetch it based on various conditions so that could be the definition for one mark okay i wrote this definition before so that i can just explain you it saves time then the second one is, is null value the same as zero? We have discussed it earlier that they're not same. So no, null values is not same as zero. Null means no value, whereas zero is a number. So if you perform null plus 100, it gives you null, but zero plus 100 gives you 100. Okay. Then we have the question like write the update command to increase the commission. The column name is COMM by 500 of all the salesmen who have achieved sales, column name is sales, more than 2 lakh, the table's name is company. For salesmen, they have not told us that there is a field to check the job or something. We just have to check for all the employees which are there in the company table. So the command is update, we write update, table name, table name is company, then we write the keyword set, set what, set the column commission. Commission should be changed to commission plus 100 so that it's incremented by 500 where sales greater than 2 lakh. That's what is given in the question. So that's how we write the update query for one mark. Then you have question number D which says that uh, while using SQL pattern matching, that means using your like operator with the commands, what is the difference between underscore and percentage wildcard symbols? So when we use like, we use percentage to specify one single character, which we don't know what it could be. So when you know that exactly there is one character, but we don't know what character it is, we use underscore for that. Whereas percentage represents zero or more unknown characters. So there could be any number of characters where a percentage sign is given. I'm not given an example here since the question is for just one mark, but if you want, you can mention an example over here as well. Then E is how is primary key constraint different from unique key constraint? So there are two major differences. One, primary key attribute can be only one in a table. So one table can have only one primary key. Whereas I can have multiple attributes which can be given as unique constraint. Second difference is that primary key cannot have null values. Primary key cannot contain null values. Whereas a unique attribute can contain null values. So these are the two major differences between primary key and unique key constraint. Then is write one similarity and one difference between CAR and varchar data types. So similarity is both are used to store alphanumeric data, means you can use alphabets, digits, special symbols in them, and their maximum size is fixed. When I write CAR 20 or I write varchar 20, I specify that maximum 20 characters can be stored in that. The difference is the minimum number of characters. CAR occupies a fixed amount of space in memory, whereas varchar occupies only as much as required by the value stored in it. Example, if we store Java in a CAR 20, it occupies 20 spaces, but in case of varchar, it will occupy only 4. In case of CAR, it will store Java and then 16 blank spaces after that to make it 20, but in varchar, it will occupy only as much as required. So that is the difference between CAR and varchar. There is a question, what is a transaction? Which command is used to make changes done by transaction permanent on a database? So transaction is when you have a number of SQL queries together to solve a particular task. So that's a transaction and commit is used to make the changes permanent. So that's your question number three, which is SQL. Then we have question number five and six, which belongs to SQL. So let's come to question number five. Here it says, Distinguish between single row and aggregate functions of MySQL. Write one example of each. Single row functions are the one which works for every row in the table and aggregate functions are which work on multiple rows at the same time. So to differentiate between them, I can write like single row functions. 
substitute for every row individually whereas an aggregate or a group function works on more than one row at a time. So if I have to find sum, I have to find average, I have to find count, those are the functions which work on more than one row, so they are aggregate functions. But if I have to concat, I have to do round, truncate, something like that. So that's your individual or single row function. So we have to give example. Example, if I write like select U case, in bracket I write name from student. So I want to show the marks also of the student. So I can write U case comma marks from student. So this will show name of every student in capital letters. So this U case function is an individual row function which works for every row individually, changes the name to capital letters and shows it. Whereas example of aggregate function would be, this is example of single row function. And then if you have to give example of aggregate function, I have to show the average marks of students. So I can write select average marks from student. So that will show me the average marks for all the students in the school. So this is how we can get the aggregate one, which works on more than one rows. An individual works on a single row. So that's the major difference between individual and group functions. Then consider the following table name soft drink. Write commands for the following 1 to 4 and for 5 to 7 you have to tell the output. The first question says to display names and drink codes of those drinks that have more than 120 calories. Okay, simple. We have to start with select since we have to display. We have to display what? We have to display the name and drink code. For the name column, the name is dname and for drink code, it's drink code from the table name is soft drink that have more than 120 calories. Okay, so we give where, where calories greater than 120. Simple. So select name of the fields which you have to see from name of the table where condition. So that's how we give the answer for question one. Then you have question two that says to display drink codes, names and calories of all drinks in descending order of calories. Okay. So first of all, we write select, then we have to write the attribute names. We have to show drink code, then we have to show drink name. We have to show calories. We don't have a condition. So we just write from name of the table, which is soft drink. You don't have a condition, but you have to sort. So we give order by of all drinks in descending order of calories. So order by calories descending. So we will sort as per the calories in descending order. Third is to display names and price of drinks that have price in the range 12 to 18. So you have to display name and price. That means D name, comma, price from soft drink where where price in the range 12 to 18 so price between 12 and 18 so it will check the price range if it's between 12 and 18 it will show this otherwise not so it's written 12 and 18 included and between includes both the limits and the condition increase the price of all drinks in the given table by 10% Increase means you have to change. So when we have to change, we use the command update. Update what? Update the table soft drink. Update the table soft drink. Set what? What do you have to change? I have to change the price. So set price. Set price is equal to, we have to increase, so price plus, how much we have to increase? 10% of the price. So price plus 10 into price upon 100, finding the 10% or you could write 0.1 multiplied by price that also gives you 10% so whichever way you feel easy you can write it that way so this will update 
soft drink set price is equal to price plus 10 percent of the price it's not mentioned like for which records you should increase it you have to increase for all so there is nowhere with the update command in this okay so this is the sql queries now for the next three the queries are given we need to tell the output so select count distinct price from soft drinks so inner thing works first Distinct price means we have to find all different prices first. So 20, 18, 15, and 12. These are the all different prices. Then you have to count them. So there are 4, 20, 18, 15, 12. It's 4. So how are we going to write the output? Write the formula first. That's count distinct in brackets. You have price and this. And over here, I write the count, which is 4. Okay, the next one. Select max calories from soft drinks. It's very simple. You have to find the value which is the highest out of the calories column in the table. So I can see that I have 150 as the maximum value. So the output is going to be 150 here. Okay. Then let's go for the next one. Select D name from soft drink where name like percentage mango percentage. That means in the name we should have mango anywhere in the name because before mango, there could be any number of characters. After mango, there could be any number of characters. So what I have to show is I have to show the D name. And lime and lemon, no. Apple ring, no. Then, then we have green mango. So we can show here green mango. And the next one would be mango juice bahar. So write mango juice bahar. Okay. So that's the answer for the seventh one. That's it. Then we get question number C, which says, what is the degree in cardinality of soft drink table? I have six records in this. That means six is the cardinality. And we have four columns. That means that's the degree. So cardinality, cardinality is six and degree is four. That's it. Okay. Then comes question number six. As usual, the first part is to create a table. So to create a table, this is answer six, A part, we start create table. Table name is library, library, round bracket, column name is given as book ID, data type is integer, it is a primary key, comma, then I have book name, book name is paragraph 40, constraint is not null, comma, then I have type, type is char4, comma, then I have author, author they have given as varchar, so we take varchar, 40, comma, then we have number of copies, number of copies is integer, and then I have price, which is decimal, so you can write decimal or just write float, close the bracket, semicolon, the query is done, and two marks are yours. Then B part, okay. B part is basically for joining. Then we have two tables. So we have two tables here, sales and location. And the question asked are to display salesman ID, name of the salesman, location ID with corresponding location name. So location name is here, name and ID is here. So obviously that shows we have to make join. We have to make join, but what do we have to fetch? We have to fetch the salesman ID. Okay. So I write salesman ID. Then I have to fetch the name of the salesman, which is name. Then I have to fetch the location ID. Now, location ID is in both the tables. So we have to mention from where we have to fetch it. So we write S dot location ID. Then I have to fetch the location name. Location name. Then from name of both the tables. The first table is sales and the allies I give is S. Then the second table name is location. The allies I give is L where I have to give the condition to join. The condition to join is that both the location IDs should be same. So we write S dot location ID is equal to L dot location ID. And there is no other condition mentioned in the question. They've just told corresponding location names have to be shown. So just put a semicolon. You don't have to write and and give a condition as we have given in the previous two papers. But here, just write the join conditions. It will show the salesman ID, the name, location ID, and the location name where the location ID matches. If this would be the query and you had to write the output, it would have been something like S1. 
Anita Singh Arora, 102, Mumbai. Then S2, YP Singh, 101, Delhi. Then S3, Tina Jaiswal, 103, Kolkata. Then S4, Gurdeep Singh, 102, Mumbai. And similarly, S5, Simi Faisal, 103, Kolkata. So this would have been the output for this. But we have to write the query. So this is the query out here. Second question is to display name of salesman, sales and corresponding location names who have achieved sales more than 130,000. Okay. So the query almost remains same. So with a bit of changes in that. What change I have to do? I have to display the name of the salesman. Okay. I don't have to show the ID. So I just move ID. I have to show only the name. Sales. I have to show the sales and I have to show the location name. Okay. To display the name of the salesman, sales and corresponding location names. So we have to show the location name from sales S comma location L where the IDs are same because that's the main condition for joining and sales is more than 130000. That's it. So that's your answer for question two. Two marks each they are. To display names of those salesmen who have sing in their names. I have to display the name of salesman who have sing in their name. So I don't need location table for this. So that shows that this query doesn't need join. I have to show only the name of the salesman. Select name from sales. Where who have sing in their names. Okay, where name like percentage sing percentage so there is sing anywhere in the name it would display that otherwise not so that's your query three then we have question four identify primary key in the table sales give reason of your choice so salesman id is the primary key in table sales and to give the reasons for the choice because it is there to identify each record uniquely so salesman id is the primary of table sales. Salesman ID is the primary key of table sales since it identifies each salesman uniquely and does not contain null values. That's the reason. Then we have the next question for one mark which says write SQL command to change the location ID to 104 of the salesman with ID as S3 in the table sales. So we have to change means we have to use update. Table to be changed as sales set. You have to change the location ID. So location ID is equal to 104. For whom you have to change where the salesman ID is equal to S3. So that's your update command to change the location ID for the salesman having salesman ID as S3. So that's your solution for the question number 3, 5 and 6 carrying 30 marks in your paper. Hope you understood everything out of it. In case you have any doubts or you have any other question which is related to SQL and you're not able to write the answer, do write that question in the comment section. I'll get back to you with the solution. And Keep watching, keep practicing because practice is the main thing. So try to solve as many previous year papers as you could because that gives you the better idea which type of questions come in the exam. So all the best. Practice well. Keep watching. Thank you. And yes, download the paper and the solution from the link in the description section below.